Seven o'clock, the meeting will come to order. I'm Grace Lesperance, Cascade Township Supervisor. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Trustee Northbrook. Here. Trustee McDonald. Here. Supervisor Lesperance. Here. Treasurer Corstand. Here. Trustee Kessel. Here. Trustee Shipley. Present. And Clerk Slater here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Is there a motion or discussion for approval of tonight's agenda? Shipley makes a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Support. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley, supported by Trustee Nordhook to approve the agenda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We have one presentation this evening, a quarterly update from our Parks Committee. Parks Committee has worked extremely hard and done an outstanding job of implementing action steps that further the township's overall main priority, preserving green space, and preserving our unique character while enhancing quality of life for our residents. Probably the biggest step that the Parks Committee has undertaken is a part of our internal staff realignment. We no longer have a community development director that oversees a Parks Committee that meets quarterly, four times a year. We now have a full-time Parks Director instead uh, that meets monthly, so we are delighted. Ms. Ginny Wanti? We'll introduce you first. It is just the greatest pleasure to introduce to you the new Parks Director, Melanie Mannion. Uh, she was the natural resource uh, manager, I always want to say supervisor, manager in Ottawa County Parks for 13 years. Before that, she was at the Land Conservancy. And then before that, which is I think when we met at Blanford about 20 some odd years ago, but she has just hit the ground running and I hope you all have some opportunity to get to chat with her a little bit and she's going to do the quarterly report and I'm going away. <laughs> Turning over the reins, as we say. So thank you. I really appreciate your, the opportunity to give you this quarterly report. Again, this is what has happened pre, um, prior to our pre, in our first quarter. I was not here for most of it. So much of what I'm reporting on, I actually, it was done by Ginny and the committee and many others. So uh, we want to begin. Um, one of the the way that Jenny and I first met actually was through the West Michigan Conservation Network. And so we want to promote this organization because it is a great organization that connects over 60 different organizations that are trying to move forward with conservation of uh, Michigan's natural features. And part of that is the DNR, our parks departments, but it's also private industry and private individuals. So it's a wonderful organization. And for our first time, Cascade Township is a hosting one of our partner events. So uh, what you see up here is our upcoming, as in tomorrow, our Oak Wilt program that will be focusing on the efforts that Cascade Township has done in managing Oak Wilt at Burton Park. This, we already had one of these for the homeowners a few weeks ago as kind of a preliminary one, but this next one is actually open to all of West Michigan um, Conservation Network partners and members within their organization. So we do encourage, if you're interested in coming, it is tomorrow tomorrow again here at the library and then we'll be doing a hike with Heidi Fry who is a forester for the DNR and one of the leading experts mm -hmm. uh, in the state on oak wilt and then we'll also be then going to Burton Park and looking at the work that was done there. <clears throat> also very, very strange twist of events. <laughs> Our West Michigan Conservation Network annual meeting will be held at Kent um, County Park's new facility, which is absolutely beautiful. It will be on the Grand River Greenway and the staff from Ottawa County Parks, where I used to work, uh, will be presenting on the this very long and amazing uh, journey in creating a 36 mile long trail along the Grand River. And then following that, again, very strangely, Ben Swayze in his new role will be presenting on the continuation of the Greenway into Kent County. So I do have a couple flyers over on the table. If you're interested in coming, we highly recommend it. It'll be a good time. 
And then we wanted to give you an update on um, some of the things that are in the master plan. Um, the first one is just to keep you um, in the loop that we are, the Parks Committee is still moving forward with discussion of how to fund both the maintenance of our parks and pathways in addition to potential land acquisition through the potential of having a millage in 2024. We'll have an update for you in June. Oh, back. It's okay. And then we will also um, wanted to let you know that we are continuing to work on the White Cliff plan that for that um, trail head um, park. We will also are working on the Cascade Recreational Park plan. And this is where we are looking at some of, we um, had a survey of not only the people that use the park, but also of our staff of what needs are within that park so that we can develop uh, a master plan to help do some improvements to kind of update and refresh that park. And so we'll be working on that very soon now that we have a coalition of the, the feedback from those, um, the constituents. And finally, uh, later on in the agenda, you'll notice that there will be an update to the bylaws. Uh, the, the committee did a great job of doing bylaws last year and bringing them up to date. Um, but one of the goals was, again, to get a director. And now that there is a director, we had to modify that and make it so that the planning director is no longer um, there and that it'll be the parks director. But we'll go over that in the new business. We also, just as a reminder, we do have a contract with Kent Conservation District. This is a great partnership to help us, uh, again, build capacity to do invasive species work and utilizes their expertise. This quarter, they've worked on six different species that you can see here from barberry, garlic mustard, bittersweet, autumn olive, honeysuckle, and poison hemlock at three different parks. This is one of those species. This is Japanese knotweed. This is one of the worst invasives in the entire planet. It is incredibly difficult to manage for and having the expertise of the conservation district came in handy. Um, if you'll notice, this is the before, the, this came in on nursery stock. And then this is the after of their treatments. Unfortunately, during the monitoring of the site, Ginny did notice a new population has emerged and that will be treated um, this spring. Which location is this? The, oh, thank you. This is at the, the cemetery on 30th Street. And again, this is one that is very difficult to, to manage. Um, they say that there is, at this point, no person has can prove that they can successfully eradicate it on the planet. But we hope to be able to at least contain it. This is the one that has the potential to creep into caskets and other... Yes, solid structures or foundations of homes or sidewalks or any of your um, asphalt. So, and Melanie, I did conquer it in my yard, but it took five years. I will say the M. Dot thought that they had conquered it in their yard. Well, <laughs> and uh, the minute they put a backhoe to the replace the sign, it came back. Yes. So you it's may have it, and I've known a lot of people who have had the same thing where they no longer see leaves foliar, but the minute you disturb the soil, it was just waiting there dormant. I have yet to find a person that is successfully completely to put a shovel in there. And if it doesn't come back, you'll get an award. <laughs> okay. And finally, uh, you will hear a common theme amongst uh, my presentations over in the future. And that is really building through um, community. And so right now we have a wonderful volunteer force, thanks almost entirely to the Parks Committee and Ginny Wanti and the Kent Conservation District. They have led almost all of our work days up to this point, but it really is limited by the amount of time that we either pay the Conservation District or have our Parks Committee. And so um, we <laughs> also have a, a few individuals that dedicate their time. And you might've seen in the last newsletter, Janine Heibel has put in over 200 hours already. And so we're very excited to have her, but we hope to have a lot more Janines. And so that's a, a goal of ours because not only does that build our capacity to do more work, but it also is really helping us inform our community so that we can prevent invasives coming in from their properties. And it also connects them to our parks in a more intimate way than just walking down the trail. With that in mind, we hope to see many of you out at our future work days. 
Uh, again, we have one that'll be in uh, July, led by the Kent Conservation District, removing Bittersweet from Burton Park. And then we have another one at Cascade Peace Park in August, removing Autumn Olive with our parks or with our um, building and ground staff and our parks committee. We'd love to see all of you there. And we would love to see all of you there. Hopefully it's not on a Wednesday night. <laughs> I don't remember. Thursday. Thursday. I was going to say, I think it was a Thursday. <laughs> Any questions? I've got one, and I'm sure that you've been briefed uh, about the importance of this subject, and we were assured that you probably had some new insight on it. It's called controlling the white-tailed deer in Michigan <laughs> for uh, more, more uh, specifically in Cascade Township. Do you have any thoughts on that? Funny thing, my very first task when I was at Ottawa County Parks was to start a deer management program. <laughs> and the very first thing that Ben brought to my uh, table was the deer management program here. It was a common thread here. So um, yes, I am very uh, comfortable with the subject and it is something that I jumped right into. I met one of the constituents, um, Jeff, and we met and he, um, and then I've also, of course, I know Rob Keyes personally, he did a deer study at one of my parks in Ottawa County. And um, we've all, and I also um, have read his report. So at this point, I am developing, I've developed a plan, a proposal that I'm going to give to the Parks Committee to review, um, just steps to get us to the point of decision making. I, I, I understand that there are a lot of people that are coming to you and voicing their concerns. And I do believe that there is an issue. Unfortunately, it is one of those um, issues that can be very controversial and can be very emotional. And so there are a lot of steps to get to the point of being able to manage for them. Education, is the most important step of all. And we can't skip that. Neither is the communication necessary in helping people understand what the issue is. And so uh, um, again, I've created a plan. Um, I've contacted our DNR officer for the region, Nick Helgis, and I haven't heard back from him yet, but I hope to bring him on site, show him Rob's report, show him um, what I am seeing in the site, and hopefully he can be an advocate for us. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank I just you. have some positive feedback for you. I was walking to my mailbox today and one of my neighbors stopped me and wanted to talk about, she had met you at the Oak Wilt workshop earlier in the month of May and just gave really positive feedback about you and that it was Aww. a pleasure to meet you and just kind of reiterated what everybody has said that we are really lucky to have you here in Cascade Township. So you're making me blush. <laughs> Thank you. I received an email saying the same thing from one of the residents who's very interested in the your management. Great. So I think he's pleased that it's no longer right in front of us and it's in front of qualified professionals. <laughs> And we will make progress on it. it. It might be slower than some people want, but we will make steps towards um, making progress. One other comment. Um, as far as importance to the residents of the township, the parks and um, the walking trails are probably on the top of the list or near it. Anything that your department needs, and I understand that you're coupled with the grounds and buildings department, which is a perfect marriage there, make sure that you voice your needs and don't be afraid to say, hey, in order to move forward, this is what we need to do for the residents. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I will say I'm a very frugal person. Again, I come from Ottawa County, very <laughs> frugal person, right? Um, but also one of the things that my mentor taught me is that people in West Michigan will spend money on quality of life. If they feel that you are buying something that will help improve the quality of their life, the longevity of their life, AKA good parks, they're willing to invest. And so if I come to you, it will be only with things that I believe are going to improve the quality of the life of your constituents. Cool. And before we ask the community or through you for any more money, the board will make sure that we've communicated properly how our current funds are spent. So, <laughs> And I, again, I want to thank Ginny and Grace and all of the people who've come before me because they have led, made fertile ground for me to be able to take and help this 
parks department grow. So we have a lot of great stuff happening and I'm hoping a lot more will come very soon. Thank you for the update and for joining our team. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. Article six, approval of the consent agenda. Motion or discussion? Oh, sorry. Public comments first. Uh, now's the time to comment on anything on tonight's agenda. Please state your name and address for record keeping and limit your comments to three minutes. Thank you. When I see if there's other comments too, because this may be a not long meeting tonight, feel free to make them at the beginning if they're on, not on agenda. Dorothy Cribbs, 1980 Deerfield Court, Southeast. Um, I noticed on the agenda that um, we're going to be looking at um, the personnel and finance committee, which at the last meeting I became, I, I've been to all these, a lot of these meetings and I didn't understand that the finance and personnel committee was the one that didn't, that didn't get people put in place for it. And um, after hearing what our new treasurer said, I agree, this is a really important committee and we may have been operating fine without it, but we, it's an important to have, I'm, I'm an accounting finance person and business person, and it's very important to have those checks and balances in place and to have that committee. So I really encourage us to go ahead and get this in place because that is something that's very important for transparency and all and make sure that everything is being followed. Um, the other thing, too, that was brought up at the last meeting, and that's not on the agenda, but it's the um, conflict of interest form. Um, and that is also something that is really important to transparency. And I don't see that on the agenda. I, I don't know what we need to do. I thought that form was already approved. So I thought that it would be being used and I'm not sure what we need to do to make sure that it's getting used, but we need to do that um, because that really, you guys need to be aware when there's conflicts. So um, I encourage whoever would be in charge of making sure that happens, let's get that that conflict of interest form in there and get it being used and get it out to our current vendors so that you can be made aware if there are any conflicts. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. Van Sokoma, welcome. Hello. <laughs> yeah, Scott Van Sokoma, 2570 Orange. I'd also like to say that the personnel and finance committee would be a good thing. I've applied for three jobs with the township. I see that, the, that, again, the one that I most recently applied for is no longer on the website. I've never received anything back from the human resources director. I also applied once for buildings and grounds, and then that just went away off the website, no longer there. Again, no communication from the HR lady. And again, there's now buildings and grounds for seasonal work. You'd think maybe perhaps the HR people that would contact the they would maybe contact the people that applied for the full-time spot. Maybe, hey, are you still interested in this? You know, so basically I believe the HR lady is sorely lacking in communication. And as a resident and taxpayer of the city or township, I feel that it does not look good on the township's behalf if people spend the time to send in applications and then not hear anything back. It's just very rude. Thank you. Thank you. Not that okay? That's okay. okay. Rather do it now than not have you wait. All right. Thank you. Badger Shakodaglu. This is my son, Bobak Shakodaglu. We were here last month. And um, what is it? Let's say the address, right? 57 28th Street. <laughs> 57, yes. Backyard. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, so we were here last month and um, we, I'm not sure about the date, but what six, seven months ago we have applied. And I guess the state has passed us. We're just waiting to see if the township is allowing us to have the liquor license. 
And um, till last month, nobody even knew that we had applied. Sarah was taking care of it before, and then Ben was taking care of it. And last month when we were here, we were told that this month it will be voted on and we're not even on the agenda. So we don't know what we're supposed to do anymore. We hear you and it will be on the next meeting's agenda. And I apologize for the poor communication on our end. Did it last time. But it was a yeah. it was a waiting period and it was it needed to come. It was not about their personal license, which for their restaurant, which it was is what to she's publish. referring to. It was to make the decision. Right. Correct. You're right. Can you hold on three weeks or two weeks until the next board meeting? Two weeks. Sure. It's three yeah. weeks. Sorry. It, three weeks. Memorial Day. It will be on the next meeting, and I apologize. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Publish that is available. She spoke they to said, the manager Swayze about that. Um, she said they applied through the state, so to me there would be something available if they have applied. It's right? my understanding, although it was my understanding, it would be on. Uh, it would be this month, but that the notice requirements have been met. Okay. So. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Any other comments in person or virtually? If any of our Zoom participants would like to participate in this public comments section about anything that's on the agenda, please raise your hand. Okay, we'll have another section for public comment at the end of the meeting. Article six, approval of the consent agenda. Motion to approve, sure, please supports. <clears throat> It's a motion by Trustee Kessel, supported by Trustee Shipley, to approve the consent agenda. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. We have no financial actions this evening, but I see that we have um, people from the Kent County Road Commission here tonight in person, and to be considerate of his time, and if there's no board objection, I wonder if we could move item 048-2023 which is under new business to the top of the discussion tonight. Sure. Good. Okay. Having no objection, we'll now talk about um, item 048-2023, the bridge pedestrian improvements on Cascade Road over the Thornapple River. Welcome and thank you very much. Yep. Yes, if you don't mind, because I'm here for questions. We're a little short staffed. So if you don't mind giving us the overview, sure. I guarantee you know the most about it in this room. Sure. And I'm not sure what you have in your packet, but what the Road Commission did provide the township a couple of weeks ago, and I think it went to the DDA subcommittee um, really for review, but was looking at the Cascade Road Bridge over the Thornapple River and really concerns about safety, pedestrian safety. We looked at a couple different options for that bridge to, to improve it within its existing structure and not building or widening the existing structure, which gets very, very expensive. Um, two things that we looked at, one was to actually cut the raised sidewalk down, which would give more shoulder area, would be better for bikers, but not necessarily for walkers or handicapped folks, uh, because there would be no separation between the traffic area and this shoulder area. So the other thing we looked at was putting a railing on the traffic side. Right now, the barrier rail to keep cars from going into the river if they were to hit the curb and go up over is on the back side of the sidewalk. Well, there's a railing system that we could attach on the inside. It would require narrowing up the existing lanes on the bridge. There would still be five lanes, but we would take a foot away from each lane. It would make the lanes 10 to 11 feet wide. For the speed through there, that's plenty wide enough. It might also create some traffic calming, which is another concern, trying to slow cars down through the village area. So we put together an estimate. I did send a photo. I don't know if I, that is, is available or not. Yes. Yeah, it is. 
is it? Sorry, it's in our packet in the packet. Okay. It's not, yeah. That is, if you're interested in actually looking at it, I was actually out and about on Saturday and noticed that the city of Grand Rapids had put a similar type railing on Maryland over I-96. Now, the railing would look the same, but it would be on the front side. It would be on the road side. They have this on the back side, and then there's a very tall chain link fence. And the reason for that is I-196 is below, so you've got to have a certain height to keep things from going down onto traffic. So uh, the estimated cost to do that, because once we do move that curb in, we also have to do similar on the approaches to the bridge. So it would extend from the intersection of Thornapple all the way to Thorncrest. And estimated cost $350,000. Um, again, it's an estimate. We would have to advance the existing plans. What we really have provided the township so far is really a schematic. So we do, we're very comfortable. It can be done. It would provide a six foot sidewalk area, a barrier on the traffic side. The barrier that's currently on the back side could remain as is, but we would recommend attaching some vertical element really for bicycles. So the inside rail and the outside rails would be at a 42 inch height, which is really what you want for a bicycle rail. Wayne, um, I, just, Wayne I just want to ask, if we were to approve this, what, what do you think the lead time is to get started? <laughs> we would put plans together. It would probably be at least a month before the project could be bid out. Uh, the one thing we're trying to get a grasp on is fabrication of the railing. Unfortunately, with COVID, a lot of items are further out than they typically have been in the past. Uh, it's also a little bit later in the season. So if it were to be bid out, I would recommend that there would be flexibility so that you would get better bids if a contractor couldn't get it done before winter, which to us, we'd want it done by the end of October. Uh, the other option would be to complete it in the springtime. And that does it do both sides of the yes. bridge, but not the same exactly as you explained it, right? Actually, both sides would be similar. We would actually move, we would add two feet to that curbing the new rail, the railing on the inside would be mounted on top of that new curbing. Again, it would reduce the lane widths. It'd still be five lanes wide. The, I, the area that was problematic was the other option of cutting that um, sidewalk, the race sidewalk down to the grade of the traffic. Because on the dam side or the south side, there are AT&T conduits within that, which again, could be relocated, but there could be a significant cost to that. So that particular item would have been done on one side only. So and this raised said, with the railing would actually be both sides of the bridge. You said you met with the DDA about this too? No, I was not in attendance last week. I had a conflict, but the information went to the DDA. Our in-house engineer showed up in presented the issue along with manager Swayze in person at the last DG meeting, and they came to the same conclusion, recommend, recommendation. So the walkway area between the two railings would be about six feet, which is fairly comfortable for a one-way, I mean, two pedestrians could pass in six feet. It obviously doesn't qualify as non-motorized, but you would have it on both sides of the road. Is it fair to say, Mr. Harrell, that um, for that, 350, 400,000 price point, it's really the only way to get actual barriers that are physically, like that provide actual safety more than a painted line for pedestrians and bikers? Yes, because we'd actually mount it into the existing raised sidewalk. That's, that's really going to be the main support. The beams on the bridge are actually what are called box beams, and they have a very shallow top, about five inches of concrete. So we don't really have a way to mount into those beams. We'd actually mount into the existing road face of that curbing that's there now. And so. what was the, I know the idea of a separate pedestrian 
expansion expanded area of adding on had been floated? What were the um, cost approximate estimates? Very, very ballpark based on using a couple trusts, prefabricated trust type structures. I would ballpark it at about a million and a half. And be, the big issue is that you have to extend the piers. So the center support on the bridge and then the abutments, the outside supports on the bridge would have to be extended. Whether you did it on the south side or the north side, the north side, what's problematic, obviously, is the building on the Thornapple River Drive side, because we would need some separation, say, probably ideally 10 feet between the road bridge for future maintenance, as well as maintenance for the trail structure. When we did the Camelback Bridge, we really incorporated it all as one unit and doing it all new construction is much simpler than trying to retrofit it to the existing. If you were to go on the other side, my understanding is the township owns the house in the uh, Midas yeah, muffler. Um, but so they have up to 10 to 12 years. There, but that's not ideally the side I think that you're trying to address more users on. So having the separated bridge would, you might have to buy the other corner. And and so that that makes it problematic. But I, I think a million and a half, and we made the estimate on the Burton Street bridge pedestrian at 2 million, and the estimates were coming in closer to 3 million. So this million and a half is is really kind of just a coin toss, but I don't think it would be any less than that. And what we're seeing in bridge work is really a dramatic increase in the last couple of years. Part of it's related to materials, fabrication costs, labor costs. Um, some of it is just availability outright of certain types of materials. So much less cost to do this, but again, so to make it safe for walkers, uh, ADA, um, older people like me. But if you're a biker like Tom, he's going to be in the road and it really isn't going to help him. Um, the other one won't either, though. Are you a biker? Yeah. Same. But I, I think for, the, for what you have for the dollars and bang for the buck, it's probably at least at that particular crossing, probably the, the <clears throat> best option to give people going over that bridge a little more comfort and safety. You're going to do this on both sides of the bridge? Yes. For 350? Yes. Thank you. And before I'm not going to do it. I mean, that's our estimate. Obviously, it does need to be bid out. But again, if there's, if it was, if you wanted to try to accelerate it to get it achieved yet this year, you potentially are going to pay more dollars for that because contracts, obviously, contractors are um, filling their plates and many already have enough work for the year. So the bidding pool would be much less than if it was put together bid out later this year for 2024 construction, which would be my recommendation. And before the barrier, actual safety, physical barrier had been flushed out, is it, am I remembering right, that to shave down both sides under the first um, design was about 250 per side? Yes, it was actually 000. more expensive because yep. we still had the issue with the railing. Um, and no actual barrier correct I mean, what what do you need from us to take the next step to go to the, the bid process well we have a work order that ben had signed a few months ago and and really all we've done is conceptual it and if this is the direction that the board wants to take the township wants to go with then we would we would go in this direction finalize plans and a bid packet and then we, we really were still trying to get costs and timelines from the fabricator of this railing system of how available would it be if we could get it bid out and still do it in the fall. So it really just the, the nod to go ahead and we would advance to biddable documents. I just have a question, just in general cost paying for it. The DDA had talked about 
maybe funding this because it is an access into the downtown area and also the trails has talked about it. I'm just wondering what we're thinking once it gets to the end point. It had, so funding wise, um, the DDA had committed to fund one side pending their approval of the design. But at that point, we, under the first um, cost estimate without the barrier, it was up to 250,000. Mm -hmm. And then the remaining funds, I believe this board approved that they would be paid for under the um, ARPA, American Recovery, some, it's all, the, all the COVID money that was coming out. So that is still good to go. And I know that our in-house engineer um, is ready to go. And as soon as it's put in his plate, both him and the road commission have moved promptly. Okay. So it will be a joint thing between mm -hmm. some will be with the DDA. Okay. That was my, my biggest question. I've, we've heard very clearly that this is a priority of the people that love the pathway system, especially those that want to make the village area more walkable. And I think a big plus here is, as he pointed out also, is the potential for it to be a traffic calming device, uh, much like what the city's done when they've narrowed down their uh, streets a little bit. I think it would be advisable to go forward with this and if necessary i'll make the make the motion when i just want to, with regard to funding the downtown development authority technically is uh, it's outside of just outside of the um boundaries of the dda because it goes up to the tuffy and burbergs however we did just to double check with legal counsel it's still appropriate to use dda funds for that purpose because the project benefits the businesses within that area so people a route into there mm -hmm. yeah and so, i i agree with um what you said about I, i'm also happy that it's on both sides mm -hmm. cuz i know one side is maybe more used but i definitely see people frequently frequenting the other side of the bridge as well so i think it's really really great that we could get to this on both sides so, John, I take it that you're making a move that we authorize the Road Commission to move forward with the bid, the, the bid process? Bingo, yes. I, I would support that. Second. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley to approve moving forward with the proposed um, pedestrian enhancements on Cascade Road over the Thornapple River, supported by Trustee McDonald. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thanks for moving me up on the agenda. Mm -hmm. and. For anybody that cares, Cascade Road paving is starting tomorrow. Good. I care. I care. We'll Thank let you. you go, but we just appreciate it because you know this is one of many issues and you're all you're doing a great job. Okay. Thank you. And Eric will be um steering the ship. Article eight, unfinished business. Item 004 2023. Supervisors mm -hmm. appointments to the personnel and finance subcommittee. As I stated in my memo, the township is currently in the middle of a pretty significant transition as we search for a new manager and reinstating a subcommittee and the, the personnel finance committee specifically, I think would immediately and greatly enhance the board's knowledge <laughs> and also ability to oversee um, staff and financial issues. Um, and employees, multiple employees have also indicated that this would be a big help for them. So um, like all of our subcommittees, even though it's advisory only, we will be complying with the Open Meetings Act, which means the public is welcome to attend, has the ability to comment, and it will be properly posted on our website. And again, any decision making that requires board approval will be um, still at the regular meetings. Questions, comments? I, I move to approve these appointments. Support. I have just a comment. Comments, discussion? I have, just, I have a comment. Maybe discussion. Um, just looking through as somebody new to the board, I think it's somewhat frustrating. Um, I was kind of doing some digging on the website to see history of this committee and to see prior minutes, prior agendas, and just a general statement as you know, somebody who lives in the township, that it's quite frustrating that these meetings prior to 2020, correct? Is that when it, when you started? 
2020. 2020 was the first ones I could find on the website that were actually posted. The agendas, the minutes, and such were, were posted. And just making a general comment about transparency when we talk about starting this committee back up and just knowing that this will be a public meeting for people to come to, that there will be agendas posted. I just think it's really, really important for the community to know that. I, the resident who brought up the conflict of interest form, that's a perfect example of we've known about it, we've pushed it, but internally um, within staff, it hasn't happened in over a year. So this is that's a great example of something that's important, that's needlessly been delayed, and the lack of uh, the ability of this board to more actively oversee it has, has it's been a hindrance. Yeah, and I have that on my little note here too, that that is a prime example of why we need this committee currently, um, is things like that, that the committee can work together with staff being at the meetings as well to get these things implemented and get them completed and to get follow up and to make sure things are done correctly. I didn't say to, this, these are the same appointments uh, that the board rejected the prior times that I put them up for approval with a 4-3 vote, it's the supervisor, the current treasurer, and trustee Timmy Nordhook. So this is the exact same, other than the fact that we now have a new treasurer. Further discussion? So that was a motion by Trustee McDonald, supported by Trustee Kessel. Is that correct? Yep to approve the reinstatement of the Personnel Finance Committee. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Trustee McDonald? Yes. Trustee Kessel? Yes. Trustee Shipley? Yay. Trustee Nordhook? Yes. Treasurer Corstons? Yes. Clerk Slater? No. Supervisor Lesman? Yes. Motion carried. New business. Item 045-2023. Resolution to amend the Parks Committee bylaws. Welcome, Ms. Mannion, and thank you for the overview. Thank you. Twice in one meeting. <laughs> um, begin with the statement of my position as the director. We, the committee, the Parks Committee, looked at the bylaws that they had updated last year and realized that um, there needed to be a change from the having the staff person in relating with them as the planning department director to be the parks director. So that is the main change between the existing bylaws and the current bylaws that we're proposing. In addition to that, there was one typo. And then the last was uh, making it so because the director, the parks director is the recording secretary, but as we currently have it, it's our administrative assistant that actually is taking the minutes and then our secretary approves them. Um, so it just added the language of um, having it in uh, um, the minutes being prepared by or at the direction of the recording secretary. So they're two very minor additions, changes, but we just would like to have your approval. Were there any other changes other than those two minor ones? No. Discussion, motion? Motion to approve, support. It's a motion by Trustee Kessel, supported by Treasurer uh, Corstange to approve the amended bylaws. As stated, all in favor? Oh, Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Treasurer Corstange? Yes. Trustee Nordhoek? Yes. Trustee Shipley? Yay. Trustee Kessel? Yes. Trustee McDonald? Yes. Rick Slater? Yes. Supervisor Rosberg? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you, Ms. Monty, for spearheading those, those edits. Item 046-2023, approval of Type 2 Special Use Permit for a trucking terminal facility at 5610 and 5620 Craft Avenue. Planning Director Hilbrands, welcome and thank you right. for the overview. Thank you. So here the applicant is requesting a type two special use permit to allow for a trucking terminal to be located at 5610 and 5620 Craft Avenue. This site is located on the east side of Craft between 52nd and 60th streets and is in the transitional industrial zoning district. 
Uh, type two special use requires a public hearing at the planning commission for a recommendation to the township board for final approval. The facility being requested here would include two phases with a 30, about 40,000 square foot building located in the front lots and approximately 16,000 square foot building located on a rear lot. The two existing lots along craft left to be reconfigured to allow for this. So if the special use permit is approved, the applicant would then need to apply for a lot line reconfiguration, which is a staff review. Both buildings will include warehouse and office space, as well as a service area in the phase one building. So these uses require total of 68 parking spaces, and the plan does show uh, there to be 68 spaces provided. The plans will also meet the setback height and buffer yard requirements of the zoning district. The trucking facility is required to maintain 100 foot setback from the front property line and 50 foot setback from all others, and the facility does appear to meet those requirements as well. A trucking terminal is required to have a 500 foot setback from any residential zoning district. There is an uh, ARC zoned parcel to the northwest. So the site plan indicates the 500 setback from the property and all of the facility areas are kept out of that setback. There is also a home located immediately adjacent to the facility at 5640 craft, but because that parcel is also is already and also zoned transitional industrial, that 500 setback would not then apply to that parcel. Uh, the project has one proposed curb cut on the craft avenue, which will need to be permitted by the road commission. Uh, the grading for the driveway extends onto the neighboring property, so approval will be needed for the by the neighbor to allow for that work, and I know the applicant's already been working on that as well. An extensive landscape plan has been submitted that meets township requirements, and a landscape bond in the amount of no less than $69,000 should be submitted. A photometric plan has also been submitted that does meet township regulations. The fire and building departments both reviewed and approved the plans as well as the township engineer um, and signed off on them and the engineer noted that a stormwater maintenance agreement would need to be provided as well. So when reviewing a type 2 special use permit, the township is required to review a number of factors that are listed in chapter 17 of the zoning ordinance and also included in the staff report and it does appear that the facility will meet all those requirements of chapter 17. The Planning Commission held a public hearing on this matter at their May 15 meeting and recommended approval of the special use with staff conditions. And at this time, staff are recommending that you approve the special use permit for the trucking terminal with the seven conditions that are listed in the staff report. Motion discussion? <clears throat> Brian, did, is, is the applicant good with the conditions? Uh, yes, they didn't, at the Planning Commission, they didn't indicate any concern with them. And they are here as well if you have questions for the applicant. Good. Thanks. Welcome. Thank you. And feel free to speak or say anything if you'd like. Trustee Shipley? I think that this is a perfect example of the proper use of our zoning in <laughs> the general area of where, to where it is. Uh, Brian, did you say that the road commission is going to do any improvements on craft? I know that area is a little sketchy as far as... Uh, width and condition of road surface? They had done some recently, I know, and it is um, it is classified as a trucking route by mm -hmm. the Road Commission already, so it's anticipated to be able to accommodate heavy truck traffic, um, but I don't know if they have specifically any new ones planned right at this time. Okay. Planning Commission has done a great job on this, and also thank you, Director Hilburns. Make a motion to approve subject to the staff's nine conditions. Chair, please supports. That's a motion to approve the proposed special use permit subject to the amendments noted in Director Hilburn's memo. Clerk Slater, or I'm sorry, um, that was made by Trustee Kessel and supported by Trustee Shipley. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Trustee Shipley. Yay. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Trustee Kessel. Yes. Trustee Nordhook. Yes. Treasurer Corstand. Yes. But Slater. Yes. Supervisor Lesbrats. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you for choosing Cascade to invest your money and also taking the time to come in person tonight. We were looking forward to seeing more of you. Next item 047-2023. Uh, this would be the public hearing regarding the proposed camping and storage of personal property ordinance. For background, um, this was brought um, to the board by our community policing officer, Deputy Omar Diepa, with the Kent County Sheriff's Department. And it was in response to um, some of the public safety issues that have been gotten a lot more intense along around the overpass on 28th street the expressway overpass and the first one being the 
ongoing and disproportionate amount of crime, which requires our police and fire response at several of the hotels. And we're working with legal counsel to legally and effectively recoup some of those costs and put that burden back on those business owners. Um, that will be up in front of the board soon. This particular ordinance is in response to um, the public campaign that has that has uh, popped up around the overpass and in the clover leaves that has brought on some public safety concerns like fires. And this would allow the townships, community policing officer through the sheriff's department to directly address those issues rather than waiting for MDOT to handle that for us. So this has been, uh, again, reviewed by the King County Sheriff's Department and then um, by our legal counsel. So we'll have a public hearing. We'll open it up for public hearing. Um, we'll try to answer any questions. I move we go into public hearing. Support. It's a motion by Trustee McDonald, supported by Treasurer Corstange, to enter public hearing for any public comments regarding the campaign and storage of personal property ordinance. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are now in open session. Is the time for anyone wishing to comment to come forward? Mr. Van Sokomo. Now, this is regarding just public property owned by either the government or what have you. It doesn't constitute someone camping at Meyer. That's still private property, right? Correct, which requires permission by the property owner to the sheriff's department to, to evict those people. Okay. So if somebody wanted to set up camp at our beautiful uh, two parcel lot along Thornapple River, that would be where this would fall into place. Correct. And these are public meetings. So maybe we gave someone the good idea tonight, but hopefully not. Well, it is a nice spot, you know, that that's owned by the township. So just curious, but so just wanted to touch base on that and any of the parks, this would encompass that as well. Correct. So the bridges, parks, anything owned by government per se. Correct. Okay. All right. But yeah, no, sounds like a good plan and a good way to tackle any uh, future issues. So. Is there anyone virtually, Ms. Brott? If anyone virtually would like to participate in this public comment, please raise your hand. Is there a motion to close public hearing on this matter? Shipley makes motion to close public hearing. Support. It's a motion by Trustee Shipley, supported by Trustee McDonald, to close the public hearing. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Article B, the board will now consider the approval of the said recommendation, of the said ordinance. Discussion? Motion? Motion to approve. Support. Discussion? I just want to add that I think it's, it's it's a necessary ordinance, but I think what's really good is we certainly understand there are homeless issues um, that are very complex, and we're not able to deal with all those homeless issues. But it's nice to know that in the ordinance, there when there are viol uh, violations, um, there's a process to ensure that any violators uh, of the ordinance can be voluntary voluntarily connected to resources um, to help the homeless conditions. So. This isn't, you know, th this is a well thought out ordinance by um, staff and by our, our legal counsel. So, I, yeah, I think it's a really good ordinance. And that's a good point. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I, I'm probably going to say the same thing you were going to say that it also includes transportation to the shelter. So, mm -hmm. we're not near shelters, but it also provides that transportation right. from the location <clears throat> to the shelter, which is important. And as part of us getting to this point, Deputy Yepa worked very closely with. Um, MDOT, but also the specific, there's a, the resources that are available primarily more in the city of Grand Rapids and the unanimous, the unanimous, sorry, the unanimous message that we see the deputy up received from the different agencies, different homeless nonprofit agencies are that the individuals that come out to come out and we're camping are, are ones that, um, decline to take advantage of the resources available to them. And instead for you know, the, chose to come out here rather than um, abide by the rules that are required within those assistant. assistant but we areas. still offer them 
hundred percent opportunity versus just carting them away. Mm -hmm. Um, we give them a ride back to the agencies, whichever one they choose, and yes, hundred percent, we've been doing that. Okay, good. And we also confirmed that that those resources are available. So yeah, good point. Okay, and that was a motion by myself, Trustee Kessel, supported by Trustee Nordhook to approve the ordinance regarding camping and storage of personal property. Clerk Slater, please call the roll. Trustee Nordhook. Yes. Trustee Shipley. Yay. Treasurer Corstange. Yes. Trustee Kessel. Yes. Trustee McDonald. Yes. Clerk Slater. Yes. Supervisor Lesbrunt. Yes. Motion carried. Article 049-2023, Manager Search Committee. Um, a few different issues here. First, as we move the direction to, to find a, a great manager as quickly as possible, um, the search committee under the or the staff under the search committee's direction prepared the, the literature you have in front of you. So specifically a job posting, um, a community brochure that applicants would look at to learn more about Cascade when making the decision if they want to apply. And that was done by Sabo um, PR firm when we posted the parks director position. And then internally um, staff upgraded that and expanded it, made that a little bit better for the manager position. And then the job description was already available and really unchanged. Um, so that literature after several meetings is ready to go hasn't been shared publicly, um, but up for discussion. And then also interim manager, the HR director had posted the interim job posting. And we have in the last several days received several applicants, I think four or five. And we also have been in contact with our legal firm, Foster Swift, who um, today, had a couple candidates that they'd worked personally with and were and know that they're willing to um, put their hat in the ring for interim manager. So we can move swiftly on that. Lastly, the issue is uh, the decision whether to post, use our full-time HR staff to post the um, literature on, this, on the websites that we know um, consultants use or to send it out to a consultant firm. Manager or HR Director Murawski reached out proactively to multiple consulting firms and the search committee interviewed two of them. Uh, there was another person that for whatever reason wasn't able to attend. Um, so tonight, questions, discussions, board action on any and all of these. And I anticipate that this will require a special meeting. 18 hours notice, but we need to act promptly. So just so you know that. I have a question. How far down the road does the search committee think it's going to take to find a permanent uh, person for this vacancy? And what I'm getting to. It's flexible. What I'm getting to is if it's more than three, four, or five months, then an interim manager may be necessary. However, if it's going to be just four weeks, five weeks, do we really need to go out and search twice? Once for an interim manager and once for a permanent manager? Especially since I see some of the uh, potential costs if we use these search companies to find them. And do you think that the interim manager we went ahead and posted for and could be done, if we went that route, could be done quite quickly? Yeah, and I think during the process, of course, our, along with the long-term goal, getting the right person in, immediately we tried to get that job description up and posted for the interim so that if there was a potential, if we did have some candidates for that, we could be doing that parallel with the long-term search because the long-term search is an unknown. I mean, truly, we have no idea how long it could take us to find the right fit for that position. So we were truly working both of those parallel to quickly get the interim out and then also to be working on these 
oh, things the, for the long term. Our, our human resources director, resource director, the interim list that's posted on, I believe, the MML's website, she reached out to all those candidates um, and then posted it. And I believe she did that mid to mid week. It might have been the week before. The end of the week before, maybe Friday. they're all blending together. Yep, I know. I think it was Sorry. Friday. So it was, it was nice to know that we had four or five responses within several days, but then also really reassuring that then um, that our legal firm who practices municipal law all over the state had a candidate who potentially might be interested um, that they'd already worked with if we choose to go that route. Uh, you're you're talking to a skeptical person here, okay? And um, that's why we pay you the big bucks. <laughs> and if any of these candidates expect to sit at home and do their job remotely, they are damn well wrong. I don't expect to hire somebody to help facilitate the the township office or the residents who isn't there in person resolving the problems or for coordinating the solutions. I, I think that I understand what you're saying. I'm glad. The one the one thing I think we did talk about though was um the potential, I guess, if if we go the interim route of doing a kind of per diem pay type thing where if they could not like if they cannot because a lot of these people are either retired or you know have previous have worked in this this business before and are retired such like that or have other businesses they're working so we did talk about maybe doing a per diem rate where if they work 20 hours a week for the township like you said potentially it would be hopefully in person because that's what we would need but we would be only paying them for the hours that they were working for us and I think that's a big piece to it especially in the interim um that that might be an option. I don't. I don't know if this influences your thinking. But, Probably not. But go ahead. Um, but in the absence of an of a manager, including an interim with a set schedule, then the fallback position is your current supervisor, a publicly elected official, as the chief administrative official as well. So, in the absence of an actual manager with those trained skills, you would be dealing with and staff would be dealing with a rusty attorney slash stay at home mom who's pretty underpaid. <laughs> I could go either way. I'm not going to drop the ball, but just. Right. And, and I will say just when we talk about remote things, there are some things with accounts payable or electronic fund transfers that Grace and I are taking over in the interim. And those are things that you do not have to be there to do. Well, I <laughs> That's one of the things that I brought up at a previous meeting is that we've spent a lot of time selecting the right people in the right seats in that township office. So this question is still in the back of my little pea brain head that do we really need an interim manager? But I'll let it I'll let it, the committee explore that and the methods of that, longevity of that, and the contractual of that. And I'll be a patient person until next meeting. The, uh, Likely a special meeting, given the need to move quickly. The uh, posting that was prepared said uh, anticipated start date of June 5th. I don't think that's realistic because that's about a week, a little over a week away before in the end of next week. Right. And it doesn't say... I, and I don't know what the committee's thoughts were on this, but it doesn't say anything about uh, being a township president. So that is the idea that any person, regardless of where they live, that meets these requirements could fulfill the uh, intro manager position. Yes, because that's a law. And we talked about that. I thought as when you were the chair of the personal finance committee, that legally we can't control, or it is illegal to require a, a city manager, a township manager to be a resident. It used to be, but they changed the law. So the only thing we can do, and this applies to interims as well, is offer a financial carrot, which we did previously. And the same, there's no different here. Years ago, the fire department had to change their selection policy of full-time firefighters based upon that same yep. law. So consequently, they got some full-timers that live in Hudsonville. And even though we can't require it, 
if you've got someone who's an actual resident too, and that's their town versus someone who works here, but goes home and considers somewhere else their community, it doesn't hurt to have someone with skin in the game. I, I think you're moving on the right path. I, I think realistically, this is probably going to be a two to four month process. We want to do it right. We want these guys uh, who you've contacted have, have a process. They're very professional processes. And we, I think we should follow those. Um, and so realistically, again, it's probably two to four months because of that. I think we do need an interim person. We set the ground rules in terms of, do they work remotely or not? I would say, no, of course not. Uh, a township manager needs to be in constant communication with his people. So, uh, and if we pay them on a per diem basis, you come in three days a week, four days a week, or five days a week, whatever we decide, you know, we set the ground rules and, and I think the subcommittee or the committee can determine what those ground rules should be. And I think we should move forward looking for an interim manager um, and establish those ground rules and see if they fit the bill. Because again, if we need them for two weeks or we need them for two or three months, uh, again, we determine that as well. This isn't a full-time position. All good points, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> now, tonight, what what are you looking for in this item? Because we've got these proposals in our packet. Um, I reviewed them all. Are you looking to put the board to make a decision on one, or what are you looking for tonight? Just in my opinion is that I think kind of what Tom just said, I think is what we're looking for right now is that we're kind of going down the right path. Um, and then, you know, it, when we get to a point where we need board approval, Supervisor Lesperance will call a special meeting at that point in time, and we will all come back together and we will make those decisions. And I think that um, by doing it that way with special meetings, especially considering our next board meeting is not for three weeks, that gives us the ability to be flexible if we do look at, for instance, interim candidates and we find somebody that we think might fit the bill, it gives us the option to move on that rather quickly um, versus waiting for scheduled board meetings, but it also gives the subcommittee, the or committee, the ability to dig deep and look at all of these things. So we don't really have to consider a search firm for township manager tonight. I don't think so. I, I think we're not quite at that. Okay. Very, very impressed that we have seven candidates for interim. Mm -hmm. Are the are are these three firms? We have a couple, excuse me, for also permanent that came in on their own. Are these three firms uh, the only ones that we have an RFP from? Um, I think we've got a couple feelers out to some other ones that we're waiting to hear back from. Did the bit, mit, mit, geez, I can't talk. <laughs> Michigan Municipal League um, uh, submit anything? I don't believe they did, but I do believe that our human resources director reached out to them. Because they were very helpful when we searched for Ben. Um, but, okay, um, that's all I wanted to know. I, I was in, very impressed with one of the firms, so. You weren't? I was. You was, yeah. Yeah. Um, one more school than the other two. Jim, what do you think with um, taking just a couple weeks of putting our posting out on all of these websites that these firms put them out on and just see what we gather. It doesn't hurt. But I think I think John and whoever else said it is right. This is an important search for us. And I think, as Tom said, we need an interim because I wouldn't rush the process of the manager. Um, so if we put feelers out, I think we tried that before. It may be a different market now. There might be more people available that want to serve as a township manager. We didn't have that luck the last two searches we did. So maybe this time we would. I mean, it doesn't hurt because I think I think you're looking at the right way of going about it and finding an interim for now. And John, you're right. They got to be in the office, but we can set the hours and we need that person to, you know, even tonight we were fumbling a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's important to that person, but I think it's also important to take the time to get it right. Agreed. I don't disagree. Works later. 
So what I hear you all saying is you think that possibly on our own, we might be able to find the interim manager based on the feedback we've already gotten. Perhaps. And that will help us determine the next step where we may need to hire a firm that specializes. At a later date, possibly? Is that yeah, what yeah I, I think that we should give it a, a go for, for, sure. for a few weeks just to see if... Throw your fishing pole in the water. Yeah, I want to throw some bait out there and see yep. what happens. But uh, yeah, if it doesn't work out, then yeah, we got to go with the firm. And, and we I look... keep calling it a net. <laughs> so Caledonia is ahead of us a little bit, but they're doing the exact same uh, search. And then Traverse City, uh, there's been a couple other places that this is the same thing. And uh, staff, when they were preparing the literature, that, <laughs> the proposed literature, looked at it. And, and that's how we knew, you know, that's what it's based off of. So we did this ourselves. And the websites that we put the postings on are the exact same three to four that the search firms use. So what we're lacking is the personal relationships with the same candidates that they're already working to put in other places. Having said that, it's agreed that it's a small pool. People who are looking to locate to West Michigan and who do the job as a municipal manager already know that Cascade Township is looking. For sure. Cascade Township is, is a desirable. And we purposely, I recommend we put the pay grade just a little bit higher than Caledonia Townships. So if they haven't made their decision, we can cherry pick from them. <laughs> but they, they wrote the $15,000 check to the consultant. And those same people are willing to drive five minutes north for a higher paying job. You're not wrong. <laughs> so this has been just, I mean, it's been a lot going on. I'm tired <laughs> thinking about all the different, and we've also consulted with uh, our legal counsel too. I don't think if we cast the net, someone had said, who was encouraging the hiring and to, to write the $15,000 check. If you don't immediately hire them, then they're not gonna wanna come back later if you need them. And um, I think based on our interviews, we that is completely not true. There's no gun to the head. There's no, <laughs> consultants are pretty easy to hire. So we don't need All right, so how about this? Moving forward, this board likely will have a special meeting, hopefully next week, to discuss interim candidates, the potential, the specific candidates, as well as structure, pricing, schedule. That will be one. <clears throat> In the in the meantime, we will go ahead and post uh, three to four websites, the same ones that the consultant used, our job posting, updated with the right date. Um, as soon as possible. Tomorrow. <laughs> tomorrow. And then um, we will post, go ahead and post and then postpone, but not make any decisions yet on whether or not to engage a consultant. Does that sound mm -hmm. like a good move? Sure. Any specifics that we should flush out while we're all here together that I missed? One one thing that we won't get searching ourselves, we found that using a search firm the last time, it was amazing how they knew the people already that applied. They knew where they applied and why they weren't selected. Yeah. We're not going to have that advantage. We're going to see a resume from an individual and not have that background. So I don't object to doing that that way, but I think if we hire one of the firms that are in our packet tonight and use them, they're going to know these people ahead of time, the good, the bad, the ugly, and it'll be a lot less time consuming for us if they weed them out. I will say one, I know all of these companies are going to be listening to this meeting, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but two, so I'm going to try not to burn too many bridges, but two, um, there was a lot of discussion during our interviews with these companies. So we do know several candidates that have applied at other places um, and whether or not they were selected and why they were not selected just during our interview process. I will say they were very forthcoming with some information to us. So you got some of that already. We did. We did. Okay. I hate to disclose too much because I, I know, know they're listening. I know, but, but, but it's a good. We thing get it. No, sir. Thank you. We get it. They were yeah. all very professional, and yeah. we appreciate yeah. their willingness to serve Cascade. And their their interviews were wonderful. Um, they were very helpful. Very helpful in answering all of our questions. Everyone that we interviewed, the two that we actually interviewed, that did get to get dates for interviews and showed up. It they were 
wonderful. Good. Okay. The most important thing I think is that people who have, there may be a few outliers, but generally people who are interested, it's a small group, right? And the people who are in the know, one, know what the consult, who they are and what they do. And two, the people who are going to apply have been looking and there's only a couple places to look. So everybody knows. So I guess the proof's in the pudding. And the, the first step that they would do is pretty much the identical posting with the identical literature, which we've got. So um, to go ahead and post on our own, knowing that we may need their, um, their expertise is probably a really great fiscally responsible but proactive step. Well, we got a free ad when Ben went on the news and said he's moving. <laughs> so everybody saw that. Uh, the way the fee structure works, which totally makes sense, is that these people, because they have the relationship, they know, you know, and they are they have different candidates that may be interested that they can reach out to. And um, but the candidates, which makes sense, um, don't pay. It's the municipality that then hires the um, consultant who then brings in the candidates. So um, how do you say it? You're not paying a finder's fee. No, and it makes sense, yeah. but I think it's the same website, so we'll see. Okay. All right, so how about, was, did I make the motion or do I need to- You just don't need to. Yeah. I don't think we need you to. Just, you just made sure we were all on the same page. Okay. Yeah, same thing. All right. Further questions, concerns? We have a question. So are you taking action? No. Okay, that's what I- well, I think it technically, I think the I think it'd be smart to formally take board action to post because otherwise, I don't think it's. Shipley makes a motion <laughs> to have the uh, position posted for interim management. I don't know. And and can we also? No, 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 no. Sorry, we're already gone with yeah. that. The, post the for main, permanent. Yeah, the permanent. Apologize. Oh, the per correction, permanent manager. A motion by Trustee Shipley, supported by Trustee McDonald, to post uh, the job posting for permanent manager. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> motion carried. We have no discussion items. Public comments. Oh man, we don't have Ben tonight. You again? <laughs> Brian Holcomb, 3415 Glenstone Court, Southeast. Good evening. Uh, talked to Mr. Walter Bujak back there, and he sent an email out, and the Red Creek, excuse me, Red Cedar property slash Egypt Creek landscaping. They did not file silt permit or erosion permits back when he did the damage. They didn't even require it, Eagle, didn't even require it to restore it. He inquired about that. We have to make another inquiry with the DEQ, Eagle. Well, we seem not to get anywhere with them. I don't care if he got fined. That wasn't the purpose. The purpose was to put back the property that he destroyed. He didn't do that. The PUD, which is Cascades PUD, and you, the board, can make him do what he's supposed to do. He's in violation of the PUD. So what I'm recommending is we will submit to you, the board, what needs to be done, what should have been done in the beginning. He needs to restore the trees. Now, granted, he can't put back 7,500 foot trees, but all he did to the DEQ was put seedlings in. That doesn't do anything. It's going to take years, if not decades, before something grows. And I'm pretty sure that most of the people that live around it, we don't like seeing the 30 some cars, which shouldn't be on his property. And some of them don't move at all. So that'll be in our proposal too. But we will give you a proposal if you want to give it to your lawyers. But it's time for the Cascade board to do something about him and his violation. He shouldn't be there in the first place, but he's there. I realize you got to work with him, but he needs to have a, a good stern thumb put on him. So unless you've got something new to add, 
from our lawyers. They want to keep it in the gray area all the time. I can understand that, but he's in violation of Cascade Township's PUD. I got to be careful to be mm -hmm. to word it the right way. And you have been put in an unfair position with this. But there's three different issues. I just want to make sure we're not mixing them. So one, you've got the traditional nuisance ordinance violations, right? Noise, sound, all that kind of stuff. That's something different. Yep. Two, we've would... got wetland um, destruction rehabilitation. Yep. Eagle. Yep. They move as fast as slow as Alaska it goes in January. Yep. But that's the that is the restoration and the violation of wetland. That is that seedlings versus the, that's part of that umbrella. Then you've got P, the, the previously issued under the prior board and prior planner special use permit as far as it's in the scope of land use. That is different than seedlings. And that is a um, its own legal issue that we have a legal opinion on from our attorneys. And it is not black and white. So I just want to. But it also says he cannot depreciate mm -hmm. people's property which he has done so not I, that clear but i really feel for you 100 percent, and i just want to be careful not to overstate the destruction and rehabilitation is separate legally even if it's not legally and as far as our duties go then whether or not the scope of the <sighs> But you, the board, can dictate that he abides by the original PUD, which he. Mm -hmm. And then you know what the PUD says? The PUD is clear as mud. So we. As have far to... as what it says, he cannot. Clarity. He it, he cannot depreciate uh, people's property around him. Uh, maybe some of the. I got to be careful. The PUD. Yeah. It's not as black and white. Okay, let's it's, have a meeting it's, with this lawyer. Forward. Let's have a meeting then. We so did. They, okay, you multiple. did. Okay. And we they said multiple. what? That it's not black. So, and what's white. our next step to get him to abide by what he should be doing? 30 seconds. <clears throat> Lawsuit? No, maybe. Well, it depends on what you're, what he should be doing, how that's interpreted, because we all have different versions of what he should be doing. And if I were you, well, the next door neighbor, I would have a different version of what this board, what he should be doing. Well, so, let's get it in writing what he should be doing then. Let's take the PUD and then put parameters on it and then uh, uh, define it more in detail than the way it is right now. If it's so wide open. Time's then, up. Then let's put. Uh, I can't, I'm not a lawyer, but I will say that those three issues, there's overlaps, but they're different. And what residents want and probably deserve is not necessarily within this, maybe. Well, it goes back to, you know, the industrial use and, uh, you know, keeping certain businesses in certain areas. He shouldn't have been allowed there in the first place, personal opinion, but he Personal is. opinion shared 100%. I hear you. So there's that pesky, the way I thing, look at the PUD, there's that he's, pesky little thing called the law and unfortunately you have to abide by it. And it's never, but when I read the PUD and he's depreciated people's right. property, that's in violation of the PUD. That's the way I read it. Right. I just, I just, I'm new. Everybody knows that, but I do believe he did get a special use permit and I think correct. But he's not using it that way. Cause I think that's part of the, the gray area is no, it is the, gray the area. PUD, and the fact that he did get something approved along the way. And we're not going to take, so you want more information and you want swift movement and I completely get it. And that's fair. But from the township, legally, we're not going to proceed unless we know we're going to win. We're not going to throw out a loser argument. And unfortunately, the cards we've been dealt legally, it's not an automatic winner, even though we want it to be legally i mean ideally the state should cover the state's responsibilities but how's that going so the townships moved a heck of a lot faster and a heck of a lot more aggressively and we're doing the best we can i hear you but our lawyers going to give us honest counsel and that pud issue isn't a legal winner necessarily so then we have to decide if it's worth it to put taxpayer money legally at two hundred dollars an hour towards an issue that may be a loser well then it's time to change how 
vague that PUD is. So but going down the road, it doesn't happen again. 100% done. Absolutely correct. Correct. And I feel very badly that residents were put in this situation. Legally, it's a little different issue. And I got to be careful because you don't want the supervisor overstating what professionals are paid well to do. But you're not wrong. The problem is you're not right either. You know what I'm saying? Depends on how you ask it. Yep. And I'm sorry. And we will do what we can. So what is the board's next step or Cascades Township's next step? No, I'll, I'll circle back with legal counsel and we can discuss it. Unfortunately, that... Can the residents be there? Yeah, can they be at the township office so we can hear them and voice so they know I understand you do a really good job, but they need to hear from us too because they want to be in the gray all the time. Oh, 100%. That's what we pay. We're not here to take the punches. That's right. what we pay legal firms for. Right. So yes. And I just have to, you know, they come privileged and confidential and we just have to make sure that we share it appropriately. But yes. Okay. And we will. Thanks for being patient. I'm okay. sorry you're in this position. Thank you. It's a good learning lesson for how PUDs need to be written. Any other comments? If any of our Zoom participants would like to participate in this public comment, please raise your hand. We'll get a meeting scheduled with our planner and you guys can come in and get some of that information. Article 13, board member comments. I just, oh, go ahead. Wish I had an answer for you, Mr. Holcomb. Um, thanks for coming, everyone. I see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, new restaurant in township. Uh, we hope that you're successful. Please bear with us as we go through the time requirements to get you what you need. Thank you, King County Commissioner, for appearing as normal. I don't care if you do live outside of the township <laughs> and uh, bring your neighbors back next time. Trustee Kessel, trust Treasurer. I, I just had a question for these folks that were here before. I'm not sure I heard your answer. Uh, we have advertised that there's a class C road liquor permit available. Yes. So that anybody that wanted to apply could apply. Yep. Okay. All right. Because we told them we'd take action. So if we don't have any other applicants, that'll be easy one. Right. Now there's different degrees of advertisement, but we have met the legal requirements. We have met that? Yep. Okay. I apologize. It was supposed to be this month. So we'll get to it as soon as we are able. So the next regularly scheduled meeting is in three weeks because of Memorial Day. Only one in June instead of two. Um, Actually, I think there are two in June. May is just a longer month, so we have an extra. Oh, second and fourth. It's five Wednesdays. That's why we don't oh, meet for oh. three weeks. The next meeting is June 14th. That will be at the latest. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Treasurer Christange. Um, At the last meeting, I had brought up the... CIP, the capital improvement project, and I was given this piece of paper on my desk here when I arrived today. I'm just wondering who this is from. Uh, from me. Okay. I just briefly have read through this when we're looking here. It appears that it is saying that the planning commission is responsible for CIP and the planning commission is responsible for a portion of the CIP, which this discuss, but it, the planning commission is not responsible for the township's full CIP. They are responsible for public structures and improvement preparation, not all of our capital improvement project projects within the community. That truly would be something that came from a manager that would be prepared with the various departments within the township, including the planning commission, to come to a full CIP that would be brought to the board. And any other the years, the planning commission has always been the body because I served on it for nine years that 
the planner, whoever it was at the time, went to the department heads to get the fire department and you know engines that they needed to buy or whatever. It all went in the plan. But that would that mean that's an internal that, staff member. The planner that, is different than the planning commission. Right. And what you're saying is and I'm just speaking off cuff, but that means that Steve Peterson was responsible for the CIP within the community or within the township, which I do not think is correct. I do not think, and I am not putting this onus on Brian, our new planner. It is not something that he has not completed for us during the, his time being here. He has done everything he can with the last two years that I've been on the planning commission to have our manager come to our meetings and try to present that to us. And it has continued to fall short and not been presented to us in full at the end. So I, I'm just saying this proves some of my suspicions in the past as a resident that Steve Peterson put together our CIP that came to the board for approval, which is ridiculous in my, my opinion. When's the last time? So the planning commission, based on watching the meetings, has repeatedly asked for a proposed CIP capital improvements plan. And it's been over two years. So the, the planning commission has been asking Director Hillbrand. It's, it's in the minutes for tonight that I requested it at one of the meetings that are in there. So the, 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 the response is the planning commission handles that. No, no, they don't. Internal staff prepares that. And the planning commission is one of several bodies that, that, the planning commission acted on the CIP and questioned <clears throat> items that were in the CIP and when they were presented to planning commission and if there needed to be things changed. Right. The planning commission recommended it and then it went to the board. 100%. The board was always careful to say that these were suggested timelines and all the things could change based on need that was in the plan. So That's what we're saying. In the, it's, in the prepa plan. it's prepared by staff and then shown to the planning commission. The planning commission is not responsible and did not produce the capital improvements plan. They reviewed it, made changes, which is entirely pr appropriate. But your statement that we always had the planning commission do that. No, well, I, that I was internally, mo that was staff. Well, and we've been waiting for three years. We're all in agreement. We need no, we're not. No, Trustee no, Castle wait, 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 wait. We're all in agreement that we need a capital improvement plan. It should be driven by staff. You're right. It, it really was driven by staff in the past. So that's another reason we need an interim manager to drive this as the CIP because they, they need to go to the various departments. I remember the capital improvement plan. It was obviously put up or, or, or authorized by each of the departments. They, they made their recommendations, their ABCD ratings. We all agree we should do it. So let's do it. It's, but who's responsible for it is now without Ben, we don't have anybody to be, be responsible for it. Right, Wendy? And so that's probably another reason we need an interim manager. I agree with what you're saying, but I think the comments are proving that Ben never did this. I don't think in the past, or maybe he helped somewhat with it, but it sounds to me that the planning director was the person responsible for it. Former planning director. Former planning director. Right, right. Now we're moving forward. So the process now should be the township manager should drive CIP, get the recommendations from the department heads, and since we don't have a township manager, that's another reason for an interim. I think Ben was going around to the different committee meetings, mm -hmm. gathering the information, but it never got to, I don't think he had a chance to complete it. Compile it. Right? Yeah, I think it was all, uh, so I think he had a lot of it put yeah. together, but it never got to the planning commission. And the, I think that what you're referring to is the planning commission is where's the capital, where's the capital improvement plan? We've been asking, we haven't gotten it. And trustee Kessel's response was, the planning commission to, to you. The planning commission always did that. No, they didn't. The Steve planning, Peterson did it. The planning commission approved the CIP plan Correct. that That's, was submitted to the planning commission by the planning director. Mm -hmm. That's and the, the way it's always been. And the planning direct, and we have gone with, for two years without that. And you rejected the personnel finance committee appointment saying we didn't need one. And there are all sorts of conflicts of interest out there by people making a lot of money. I, I think we can move forward and we all agree we need a capital improvement plan. The process we had in the past couldn't be improved upon and let's go do it. And that may require again a township manager. I wholeheartedly agree. And respectfully, it shouldn't be this hard because I think I if people knew, no, 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 this is on you and the old guard. 
if the people knew the steps that have been taken under a 3-4 board, including your high school buddy, Trustee Kessel, selling employee appreciation gifts with public using public funds to purchase those for his own business under a doing business as company called the River House in the tune of $48,000 for years, while you were both on the personnel finance committee with no disclosure to the public. One, it's illegal. Two, it's a completely inappropriate. And what did you do? Blocked. It shouldn't be this hard. We shouldn't, it should be, it should be a go without saying that we don't share a law firm with the airport who is polluting 400 plus homes with PFAS. We don't share vendors. We don't pay $700,000 a year to an engineering firm and, and with no oversight and $700,000 in addition for a bridge workup that we just don't do because the cost is skyrocketing. So the personnel finance committee that I proposed the same tonight that now all of a sudden passes 4-3, shame on you for blocking it for two years under a 3-4. And shame on you, Trustee McDonald, because it shouldn't be this hard to do the right thing for residents. And I've been patient, but the behind the scenes, no, the, no, no, the behind Grace, the you scenes, are, the you are, this is total fabrication. No, no, embellishment. No, it's yes, not. It yes, no, it's not. I, I don't want to go there. I want to move forward. I, I want to move forward. I can make up. Yeah, of course I want to move forward. You know why? Because you don't want people to know how it was done before. No, I Round don't. Hill subcommittee, forensic audit. You guys had no problem with our former manager knowingly misrepresenting to the state and the county manager. how Cascade used finances. You had a forensic audit and a shock. Trustee Kessel claims he didn't get the email with the audit in it. Okay. Yet, I don't know, the data shows when you logged in. It You can't make this up. So, but I'm willing to move forward. But shame on you guys for the... Trash Shame work on you, you for did. the lying. No, this is, this is embarrassing. Guess what? I can, I can document every single thing. Well, do it. It's because it's not true. Because Go ahead. River House didn't misspend 48000 No, you did, Trustee Kessel, as chair of the Personnel Finance Committee. The, those were River House items. was when the Road Commission shut down Thorn Apple River. River House is when a, a resident had to sue the township to get it to enforce its own ordinances because we had a creek and 100 foot trees falling by the root ball into neighborhoods because you allowed it under Steve Peterson, a developer to cut all the corners and not do a retaining wall when he built whatever he wanted on the top of a hill. And the road commission stepped up and closed the river down, but you guys closed an open meeting. You can't make this stuff up. We forced yeah, the developer to pay $150,000 mm -hmm. for violating the PUD. So I would think Mr. Holcomb's got a point. You did nothing until they showed up with their I think Mr. Holcomb has meeting. a point that if another PUD was violated and we made the developer pay $150,000, couldn't we have this person do this something similar? You know, Tom, why don't you read the legal memo? Literally, why don't you leave, read the legal memo? Because you're pretty fast and loose with facts, and we've been working really hard behind the scenes to do it right. So I get it. We're going to move forward, right. but shame on you guys for all the behind the scenes shenanigan, and shame on the old supervisor who duped this township inappropriately with inappropriately expending public funds for his own personal gain without disclosing it. We shouldn't have to wait three years for a capital improvements plan, and we shouldn't have to wait a year for a conflict of interest form, and we shouldn't have to pay an accounting firm $15,000 or $50,000 to find an extra $50,000 that just in case we do get audited, we're okay and we don't have to pay it back, but apparently we do have to. So we'll keep moving forward, and residents can be assured that we're working hard, but shame on you three. Shame on you three. Sh Grace, shame on you for making this up. This is this fact. Is check it all, Trustee McDonald. And you know what? All these meetings will be properly posted, as will the com committee meetings. Good. And they should be. I make a motion for adjournment. Support. It's a motion by Clerk Slater, supported by Trustee Shipley, to adjourn. All in favor? Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Well, we'll talk to you now. <laughs> hmm?